everyone, it's Sarah and today I am back to talk about perfumes that are in bottles that just do not match the scent. So I guess perfume juice that doesn't match the bottle that it's in. Um, this is actually a subscriber requested video. This one was super fun for me to do because I definitely, I know that there are occasions when I've been talking about fragrances and, and even saying like the liquid in this bottle does not match at all what the bottle looks like. So anyways, I've got 10 different fragrances here. I'm going to jump right in. So the first one that I want to talk about is a Britney Spears fragrance. This is Britney Spears Midnight Fantasy. And with this one, with the name as well as how the bottle looks, it's in this beautiful dark purple, like royal purple bottle. It's got, it's got light blue rhinestones on it. It's a gorgeous bottle. It's like one of my favorites in this whole line. I just think that the color of this is so pretty. And then the name, Midnight Fantasy, it makes you think that it would be something um, dark and, uh, I don't know, dark and something that you would wear at night. Um, it, ju it just definitely gives you like darker kind of vibes. Well, this straight up smells like the old Salon, salon Selectives shampoo. Um, if you guys are 80s or even 90s kids, uh, you might remember the old Salon Selective shampoo. It smelled amazing and this smells really, really similar. This is mostly... Oh, it's so good. This is like berries and fruits. It's sweet. It's got a slight tartness. Almost like tart berries and fruit. It's juicy. It's just, it's so good, but it does not at all match the bottle or the name. Um, yeah, for me, I would think like Midnight Fantasy would be, you know, something dark, maybe ambery, spiced, um, something like that. But I definitely, yeah, this is definitely like berries and fruits and super sweet and tart and fun and joyful. Um, it's light. It's not meant, and you know, I don't feel like it's meant for midnight for sure. So yeah, this is one that every time I look at the bottle, like I think about how it does not at all match the liquid inside. So that is the first one. That is Britney Spears Midnight Fantasy. This next one is, this is another one. This is one of my favorite bottles in my collection. I think it is hands down one of the most stunning perfume bottles I've ever seen in my life but I don't feel like it met the perfume inside it matches the bottle at all. This is McQueen Parfum from Alexander McQueen and oh my gosh, I love this bottle. I think it is so beautiful, shiny black bottle with these really beautiful detailed gold feathers. I love the kind of studded lid everything about this is beautiful it's a stunning bottle but this is a tuberose fragrance it's a pretty sweet tuberose fragrance and this is another one that i expect something much darker to come out of this bottle like really dark i'm talking to me this bottle is like resins and smoke and maybe incense or spices. To me, this is just, this does not scream tuberose to me at all. And that's what you get. You get a sweet, kind of slightly fresh. It's not like, it is it is sweet and slightly bubblegummy, but it's also got a freshness to it. And it does have like a very slight kind of spiced quality to it. But it's mostly just big white tuberose and I don't feel like it matches. I don't feel like the liquid at all matches the bottle, but which is fine with me. I mean, it's just such a, a beautiful bottle. So anyways, I think that whoever did this just loved tuberose. All of the McQueen fragrances are tuberose based. Um, all of the ones that are in bottles like this with lids like this, they're all kind of tuberose based. And I just feel like some whoever 
you know, whoever this belonged to, whoever's baby this was, was like, I mean, I want this bottle. It's beautiful. This is what I want the bottle to look like, but I also love tuberose. It's my favorite perfume, and I just want that. Yeah, I don't think there was definitely a lot of thought put into designing the bottle around how the perfume smelled at all. So anyways, that is McQueen perfume. Definitely, this is not what you expect to smell. I mean, the perfume in here is definitely not what you expect to smell out of this bottle. Okay, this next one, this... Now, part of this is because it's the whole line that's just, they're all in the same bottles, but, well, let me tell you what we're talking about. So the next one we're going to talk about is Aqua de Parma. This is Mandorlo di Sicilia. This is a beautiful fragrance. Now, this line, this blue Mediterraneo, that's the actual line of fragrances. It's this blue Mediterraneo, and they're all in the same bottles, but I just feel like this bottle with this beautiful white and blue label and this really be beautiful cobalt bottle makes me think almost of like aquatic or the beach, the sea, a tropical island, um, you know, Capri in Italy or Greece. It gives me those kinds of vibes. But Vandorlo di Sicilia, this is like a licorice and almond perfume. It doesn't at all match this bottle. Um, the bottles definitely have, well, I don't know. It's it's just hard for me. I don't, when I think of like the beach or tropical or warm or Capri, Italy or Greece, I don't think of licorice and almonds. I don't think of a slightly gourmand fragrance. Um, I think of light florals and tropical, you know, in a like a tropical breeze and salt and ocean in the beach. And that's what this bottle looks like, but the juice inside does not at all resemble anything like that. So yeah, this is one that it always throws me every time I spray it. Or I look at the bottle and think, you know. It's also one that you think is going to be really good for summer in the warm weather. And it does work quite well in warm weather, but this actually does better for me in the cooler weather because it's a really beautiful, cozy kind of gourmand. But anyways, yeah, this is one that I just don't feel like it matches the bottle at all. So that is Mandorlo di Cecilia from Aqua de Parma. Okay, next we've got like possibly one of the worst bottles in my collection. It's so bad, but it also, like the juice inside this bottle does not at all match what this bottle looks like. This is a fragrance from our moth called Katerina Late Blue. And this bottle, it used to have this, a, a bow that was like this mint green color, um, like a patent leather bow on the front. It kept falling off though. This is a clone. Oh my gosh, it's so good. This is a clone of YSL Manifesto Lelixir. And it's beautiful. It smells like Manifesto, but it's sweeter. It's a little bit richer. It's it's like Manifesto if you maybe added some praline or caramel or something. There's something about it that's just sweeter in the base, but it still smells just like Manifesto. It's an amazing fragrance. I almost got rid of this. I don't know why because it is so, so good. But you look at this bottle and you think you're going to get some kind of like a light floral or something spring-like or even the name light blue. I mean, if you think about light blue, you're thinking about summer, airy, citrusy, beachy. I mean, even Dolce & Gabbana light blue is like a citrus perfume. So you don't expect a dark or like a deep, rich, sweet fragrance like Lelixir. Um, yeah, it just does not... Oh my gosh, it's so good. It just does not match at all. Like even if it was just plain YSL Manifesto in here, or like a clone of YSL Manifesto in here, it doesn't at all match this bottle. Um, this bottle is just, like I said, you think of spring, florals, light blue. You definitely don't think of like dark, yummy, sweet, Tonka, Manifesto Elixir, but it's an amazing fragrance. I'm, it was so inexpensive and I'm so glad that I kept it in my collection because it smells incredible. And I'm glad I kept it because you can't get Lelixir anymore. It's discontinued and it's super hard to find and it's very expensive. 
So anyways, that is our Muff Enchanted Katarina Light Blue. Does not match at all. This next one, this is one that as soon as I saw that, even before I had this, my lovely friend was talking about how this fragrance smelled before she sent me a decant of it. And I knew what the bottle looked like, or I looked it up. I was like, I cannot reconcile how that bottle looks with the description of this fragrance. And that is Parfums Wheel Sookie Essence. So you see this bottle and it's like bright yellow, it looks like sunshine. It looks like it's going to be something citrusy or yeah, you definitely think like citruses, bright, fun, summertime, yellow, you know, you definitely don't think dark, dark, spicy chai. And that's basically what this is. This is a dark, Yes, this is a very dark, slightly woody, heavily spiced fragrance. It's not sweet. The woodiness almost gives it a, a touch of a dry quality. So yeah, it doesn't even have any sweetness to it. So you're basically getting like a heavily spiced, slightly dry, woody, dark fragrance. And to me, this bottle is not telling you that. <laughs> to me, this bottle is telling you, hey, I'm light, bright, citrusy, and fun. Definitely not deep, dark, spicy, and woody at all. So anyways, that is Parfums Wheel Sicky Essence. This is a bottle that definitely does not convey the message of what is inside of it. Okay, this next one, this is Vini Ombre from Comptoir Sud Pacifique, and this one is kind of the same as this one. So they all come in the same bottles. They don't, you know, the all of the bottles are the same, and they all look tropical. They all remind you of, you know, tropical yummy fragrances. They have a lot of, they've got like a blackberry fragrance. They've got a lot of coconut fragrances. They've got a banana fragrance. They're just known for being, they've got like a tiare fragrance. They're just known for being kind of a tropical line of fragrances. Well, the two that I have are just coincidentally not tropical at all. Again, this one is Vini Ombre and this one is called Eclats de Mons. And this is Ugh, this is the most beautiful warm spiced almond fragrance ever. Warm spiced powdery almonds. It is gorgeous. And then this one really is just like a, oh gosh, I need to try layering these because I have a feeling that these would layer incredibly. But yeah, this is just a vanilla heavy amber. It's a dark, sweet vanilla heavy amber. So to me, these bottles scream like tropical, like the rest of the line. Um, tropical, floral, yummy, vanilla, coconut, banana. They look very tropical, but these are not at all <laughs> tropical. And it's just the situation like the Aqua de Parma, where they just all come in the same bottles. So you are going to have some that just don't match the bottle at all. So anyways, yeah, that is, uh, these are my Comptoir Sud Pacifique fragrances that are definitely um, not tropical at all. Okay, next we have got a fragrance from Salvador Dali. This fragrance is called Sunrise in Cadec. And this is another one where the bottle nor the name match the fragrance inside at all. Um, this is a, Oh, it's so good. This is a pretty darn good clone of Eau de Marveille from Hermes. And it's this beautiful, very light, spiced, orange, kind of ambery fragrance. Um, it's beautiful. It's like one of the light, I would consider this an amber, definitely. Um, I would consider it an amber fragrance and I would consider it maybe the lightest amber that I've got in my collection. Um, it get, this one gets described on, if you read through reviews on Fragrantica of this one or Eau de Marve from Hermes, um, you definitely get a lot of feedback from people saying that it smells like Christmas, that it smells like a light spiced Christmas orange. And I would 100% agree. So I feel like 
this bottle, which I don't know if you can see, but it's ombre. It goes from like a light sky blue to this really beautiful pink up to yellow. And then the lid is an even lighter yellow. So it's just this really beautiful um, ombre bottle. It definitely reminds you of like sunrise in a beautiful Spanish town on the ocean or something. But yeah, the scent just does not read sunrise in a beautiful beachside Spanish town at all. Um, it really does smell like a gorgeous, spicy, citrusy Christmas fragrance. Like a very, very light amber. It's beautiful. So yeah, the fragrance is incredible. I really love the bottle too. They just don't go together at all. So anyways, that is Sunrise and Kadek from Salvador Dali. This next one is the one that every time I talk about this fragrance, I talk about how the juice inside does not match at all. And that is, this is Pascal Morabito Pure Pearl. Even the name, again, the name and the bottle are not at all indicative of what this actually smells like. This is beautiful. This is, it's got some fruits in the top. It's got pear in it. It's got bergamot. It's also got heliotrope in it. So it's this really beautiful, you definitely get the pear. I think it's got gardenia in it too, if I remember correctly. But the heliotrope really softens everything. It's not a powdery heliotrope. It maybe brings the slightest touch of powderiness to it. But to my nose, this is a Tonka forward fragrance. This is mostly Tonka bean. That's what I get the most, especially on skin. Oh, yeah, especially on skin when this dries down, you definitely get the sweet fruits in the top and a little bit of the floral, but it's mostly Tonka. And that's what it dries down to on the skin is this really beautiful, slightly sweet, warm Tonka fragrance. And I absolutely adore it. I think this is such an underrated gem. It's so inexpensive and it's, it's stunning. It really is a beautiful uh, fragrance. I love it so much, but you see this beautiful white bottle and you think it's going to be something fresh, uh, maybe even musky or soapy. It's got a name like pure pearl. So again, you're thinking pure, fresh, clean, maybe soapy, maybe musky, but no, this is a mostly Tonka fragrance. Sweet Tonka. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Tonka is one of my favorite notes on the planet. It's funny, um, yeah, I need to do an updated, like my top three favorite notes and my bottom three least favorite notes. I need to redo that video because I feel like things have changed a little bit. Tonka is by far one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite notes in fragrance. It's, I adore it. I, if I smell a fragrance with Tonka in it and it's Tonka heavy, like I have to have a bottle of it. Oh my gosh, but yeah, this is so good. But again, the, the liquid just does not match the bottle at all. You look at this you, and you hear the name Pure Pearl and you think clean, soapy, musky. I don't know. That's not at all what you get at all. So anyways, that is P Pascal Morabito Pure Pearl. Such a stunning underrated gem. Okay, this next one is more about, I don't know, this one is more about the name rather than the bottle, but I don't. I feel like the bottle doesn't even match, but this is more marshmallow, and this is a beautiful fragrance, but you hear marshmallow and you think it's gonna be like a fluffy marshmallow fragrance, like sweet fluffy marshmallow. And that's not at all what this is. This is dark, thick, rich, dense, sweet, jammy rose is what this is. It's, it's almost a touch old fashioned smelling. Um, oh my gosh, but I love it so much. Yeah, something about this reminds me of my childhood and like some, and a rose perfume that I had smelled you know, that was like an old rose perfume that maybe I smelled at my grandma's house or something. But it's not mature smelling. It's not dated smelling at all. This It's really hard for me to explain this one. It's really, really gorgeous. But again, with the name Marshmallow, you people are gonna expect to get something that smells like marshmallows and this does not at all. This is straight up rose. Um, which I love and even the even the bottle um, It's got this beautiful quilted pattern on the back 
and again you kind of with the quilting and or this like quilting pattern and the name marshmallow it gives you this idea of like fluffy sweet marshmallows you know like pillowy marshmallow and that's just not at all what this is this is a very this is very much a rose fragrance so yeah i feel like that one is a little bit misleading um so anyways that is more marshmallow it is still a beautiful fragrance though okay and then last but not least is a juliet has a gun fragrance so this is juliet has a gun sunny side up and yeah this one i feel like with again with the name sunny side up and with a white bottle with a yellow lid it reminds you of sunshine, citrus, maybe lemons, oranges, um, something fresh and light and good for the heat. Not that this isn't good for the heat, but yeah, that's just not at all what you get with this. This is fig and coconut. It's this very creamy, like just a touch musky fig and coconut fragrance. It's very warm, it's beautiful. I love it. It's one of the strongest fragrances from Juliet Has a Gun. It's, this is a beast on me. It lasts absolutely forever. But yeah, I just feel like the liquid inside and what this actually smells like does not match the bottle at all. It's, um, yeah, I definitely get the idea of like summertime citrus, and you know light and this is definitely fig and coconut so anyways that is juliet has again sunny side up that's the last one that i feel like is really does not at all convey what is in this bottle so anyways guys those are 10 fragrances in my collection that i feel like the juice inside does not match the bottle at all i would love to hear what bottles you guys have that you feel like the juice doesn't match your bottle at all um, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!